give me your first hot take. I know you've had this big you know, uh, announcement the other day. What is your just kind of macro thesis of the Web3 place we're going? Whether it's the metaverse, the NFT stuff, like what are we on the precipice of and how similar is it to the time where right before Facebook uh, was launched? Yeah, so the the metaverse to me today feels like the next frontier in social connection in much the same way that social networking did when I was getting started back in in 2004 and you know that's a big reason why we wanted to change the the brand of the company is that you know today I think most people think about us as a social media company but in our DNA you know we're a technology company that builds all kinds of different technology to help people connect and, and tries to advance human connection and of course social media is one important part of that but I think increasingly it's going to be about building platforms and experiences that deliver this sense of presence like you're right there with another person so there's you know, of course all the virtual and augmented reality parts of that and there's the hardware and I'm really excited about that the, the work that, that we've been you know, I mean we've been working on that for seven years now at this point so that's making a lot of progress um, but I think some of the experiences are starting to come together too. So, you know, we've, we've started to release Horizon and, you know, workrooms and, and some of these experiences where you can feel like you're present with someone in a place. Um, it's just pretty crazy to see how, um, how that's taking off. And it's, you know, it's not just games, you know, games, I think is the, the natural starting point, but beyond that, um, we're starting to see at this point that social interaction and, and just hanging out is starting to become the the biggest way that people spend time on, on these platforms. That kind of makes sense and, 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 and with my and Mark, when you so, say, far. so when, far. When you say these platforms, are you speaking specifically in the behavior you're seeing of people in Oculus? Yeah, yeah. On, 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 yeah. Break, break that, you know, let's, 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 let's actually go right there because you said something in there and I hope the audience is listening. Seven years, right? And I remember like yesterday, you uh, acquiring uh, Meta, <laughs> acquiring <laughs> Meta, acquiring Oculus. Oh, always tough to know how to refer to it in the past. Yeah, tense. I'm gonna I'm gonna use both. So stick with me. Um, the Oculus purchase was really interesting because the Instagram purchase, which I was really kind of caught up in because of some of the content I was making, the the attempt on Snap, all of those made a ton of sense because you were executing on the thing that I've always thought you had, which is where's the current attention. How do we play within that space? The Oculus one was weird for me because I was like, ooh, that's far away. Why did he do that? Um, seven years in Metaverse, people are just now starting to kind of get going. What was the thinking of that? Like, why'd you do that? Well, I mean, a lot of it is just that, you know, we spend most of our days building social apps that you use on a little phone. Right, and you know, as as powerful as that is, you have your phone with you all the time. Um, it's also pretty limiting, right? You're not delivering a, an experience where you can really feel like you're with another person. And um, in a lot of ways, that's that's sort of the ultimate dream of of building these digital social experiences is actually being able to make it so that people can feel like they're there together and doing something together and and kind of collaborating. And and just no technology that we have today can deliver that. So you know, we've um, you know we've seen this progression. Where you know when I when I started the company, it was you know people primarily the internet was primarily about text, right? So people right. That's right. text into a into a computer. Then we got phones that had cameras, so the internet became a lot more visual and mobile. And over the last few years, um, internet connections have gotten a lot better for everyone. So now video is really the primary way that we share experiences. So you have this progression from text to photos to videos. Connection and, and expressing ourselves keeps on getting more natural and immersive, but. That's not the end of the line, right? There's going to be something after video, and it's going to be much more immersive, um, and it's going to be something that that we can do throughout the day. So you'll have virtual reality for when you want to go into a really immersive zone. Um, you'll have augmented reality to have holograms. You know, so you, you can imagine a version of this conversation, you know, three or five years from now, where instead of doing this, um, you know, over video, um, you know, you're a hologram here in my living room, or I'm a hologram in, in your living room. And, Mark, I mean, that's just going to be pretty point, wild. I'm, I want I want to jump into that. Yeah. Uh, do you think? And I, you know, I've watched you talk in the past, and I know how I communicate this because it's always so challenging. Is your intuition 
that it is three to five years from now that that is like, that the tech between 5G, which was an important step between some of the stuff you're doing and other people, other companies and entrepreneurs are doing, do you think we can actually, I I saw something I think in my feed where you were fencing with somebody as a part of the announcement. Yeah. Yeah. Which looked wild because it was on some Obi One Kenobi shit, right? Like, the, like, right? Like, I was like, oh my god, it's it's happening. Is that is that? Do you think three to five is a, a solid guess? Is that optimistic? Yeah, like, so, talk to me about that. So I think you want to break it down to there's the virtual reality side and the augmented reality side. Yep. VR is is here, right? I think Quest was really the form factor that was necessary to make it mainstream. Quest Two, I think, was a meaningful step beyond that, and and is is um is kind of the first mainstream hit that we've had. Um, so many millions the, of them. You know, I don't know, um, I don't know, I don't, I don't know what you're allowed to share or not. So don't feel feel comfortable telling me you can't. Is there public like I'm just trying to learn uh, how we much we don't have a public number yet, but it's um, got it. But it is um. And what I can say is it's 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 many millions and it's um and it's multiple times more than Quest One, which which was yeah, sort feel, of the, it the feels it feels that, that way. Like we needed. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So that'll keep on improving, and we'll keep on shipping new versions of that. Um, so there are a lot of great experiences there, and it's been really cool to see the use cases there broaden out from games to social to now having things around fitness. Right. There's so a lot have, of fit uh, that that caught my radar that there was a lot more people paying for fitness apps in Quest than I had any clue of. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, well think about it. I mean, you can, you know, it's it think it's kind of like the Peloton model where, you know, it's um, you know, but instead yep. of having a bike or a treadmill, you just have your $300 headset and you can take it with you anywhere you want. You can do boxing or dancing or different kinds of cardio. Um, it's pretty awesome. So I think that that'll that'll go for a while and and get extended a lot. So there are all these different use cases in VR. When when you're talking about the the fencing video that I showed with Lee Kiefer yep. um, in the hologram, that you're going to need augmented reality glasses, and that's a that's a harder problem because um, first you're inventing a completely new optical stack, right? So you're not just using normal screens and and kind of building an architecture around that, which is how how virtual reality has sort of worked to date. Um, you need to design a, a projector and, and a set of waveguides so that way you can have glasses that look normal and you can see through them. So that's there's a lot of interesting science and engineering there. But for augmented reality, if you're going to wear it throughout the day, it's just a lot more important that the form factor is like normal looking glasses. Right? I mean virtual reality Mark, do you, do you, living, do you, living room. Do you think yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. Do you think by the time it hits scale that there's a chance that this is a contact lens game, not a cumbersome overlay like a glasses or a thick like how what's your take on that is that too hard i mean some people are working on that i think that that's quite a bit further off just because you know think about it it's like whatever is projecting the image needs to have an internet connection it needs to be powered right so so i mean i've seen some people have a model of a contact lens that has a little projector that's sort of like in front of your pupil and your blind spot and it can project something in but then how are you gonna kind of have that sync with the whole rest of the internet and be powered throughout the day. Um, that's well, well, what a very if I problem. put five? What if I swallowed a five G pill? <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. Let's say twenty years from now, I think that that might be a thing. Yep. But but AR glasses, I think we're going to start seeing things that look like um, you know normal looking glasses, but that can project holograms into the world. Um, you know, within the next. Five years, um, you know. I mean, I think that that's that's a somewhat conservative estimate. Did but, did, but. did Pokemon Go going back five years? Ironically, was that something you watched carefully? Because I was like, holy shit, this is yeah. now happening. People are pulling off on this highway, jumping into the woods to find a Pikachu. I would have lost. I'm pretty good at this game too, but I would have lost this bet, which was after that was such a smash hit through the phone. The fact that we're here five years later and there has not been another significant AR phone execution of that scale, surprising to me. What's your take on that? Yeah, well, I think Pokemon Go is, it, it was interesting and it's a, it's a real hit. and It, it, it is it was huge phenomenon, but it's, I consider it to be more of a location-based game than an augmented reality game. The fact that, yep. that it shows that you, that you kind of look at it through your camera um, I think is somewhat incidental. I think the core mechanic is that you're going to a place. Um, and so you could do that with augmented reality or not, but there, there certainly is going to be a whole class of experiences that are like that. But in terms of things that 
that really kind of augment reality. I think you have um, you know filters, face filters, different effects like that, um, like what you see in Instagram and and Snapchat. Yep. I think that that's a that's a real thing. That's that's I think is real augmented yep. reality. I agree. Um, and certainly, I think that there's going to be a lot more opportunity there once you get to. Um, these real looking glasses that can that can put holograms in the world. So yeah, I mean, I, I would hope that by the middle of this decade, we can have something that's sort of like that fencing um, clip that I showed. Now, the other issue on that is you need haptics, right? So that way, when you when your sword hits the hologram sword, um, you get a sense of feeling from that. Um, so that's a whole interesting other area of research. And um, I'm not sure exactly where that will be by the middle of this decade, but that's another thing that we're working on because it's it's clearly an important part of the whole picture is you need to be able to, um, you know, whether you're playing basketball or giving someone a high five or shaking their hand, you want to be able to get a sense of pressure back. Um, and that that I think is just going to be an important part of the whole thing too.